today's topic is the global AI arms race. And we will explore why we are seeing this arms race and which countries and governments are ahead and which ones are falling behind and what govern governments must do to avoid being left behind. And to discuss this, I am joined today by Trung Gi, who is a partner at Arthur D. Little and uh, Shri Vastava, um, Abhishek, uh, uh, who is a manager at Arthur D. Little. So you have just co-authored uh, an article with the title, The Global AI Arms Race, How Nations Can Avoid Leaving, leaving uh, Being Left Behind. So it's so nice to have you with me today. Thanks, thanks Bernard. Thanks for having us. So tell me a little bit more about how this this bit of research or this this bit of of of, of content came about. Sure, um, it's it's a very important topic. In fact, for for this day and age and going forward in the future, and we've been asked by a client uh, to support them in reviewing what would they need to do in order to lead this uh, AI initiative, strategic initiative mm -hmm. for the nation. And um, the, the idea was to understand the, the leaders and laggers of the global AI's uh, strategic points of view and uh, come up with recommendations for, for this client. And it's quite important to see that um, there are variations in how people see AI gets used and what policies are in place and how people actually have um, come about uh, from history to where they are to date and what do new emerging uh, countries um, like this client of ours, uh, who's only been set up uh, a couple of years ago in terms of a dedicated team. So um, I'm hoping we can explore all that with you today. Very good. So Trung, you're joining us from uh, you in Thailand at the moment, right? I'm, I'm, yeah, correct. Uh, so I'm currently in Bangkok um, in, in my hotel room here. Uh, unfortunately, the, the third wave has hit Thailand. Um, so um, yes, in Thailand. Very good. And, yeah. and where are you from? Abhishek? Uh, Abhishek, yeah. So I'm in Singapore now. Uh, yeah. And we are, our client was uh, a Singapore government entity. Very good. Very good. So maybe we can start with exploring why is AI so important to, to governments? Sure. Yeah. Um, so perhaps if I can start off um, with AI, um, as we mentioned in the article, it's, um, it's a global arms race, um, like every other arms race there is. Um, everyone's trying to compete with each other, not just for the dominance within their region on attracting um, economic value from large corporations and so forth, but the talents also to, to build through the economy and resistance, uh, resilience. Um, we've seen a lot of disruptions uh, going forward in the future with many sectors looking at AI and so if the nations um, that wants to be leading has to understand where they uh, could participate in and hence the whole global arms race uh, and there are different ways you can think about how to be a leader in certain parts depending on your strategy and that's what we look for uh, with this client very good so you, you make this parallel to to electricity maybe abhishek you can expand on that sure i think as as pervasive as electricity was in transforming different industries uh, we believe uh, AI is going to play that that big or even bigger role. Um, we, we see AI as contributing to or improving um, almost every uh, product or service or infrastructure uh, that has been that, uh, that a country is built on or the country's economy is, is built on. Um, so in, in the longer term, um, to be simplistic, uh, we believe you know, better AI would lead to a better product and in the longer term, better AI would actually win in your product. So better AI enables you to offer better customer experience, better features, lower price point, etc. So we, we see this as extremely pervasive. And I think uh, the leading governments have kind of taken this up and, and really uh, understood this well and are, are building the, the corresponding infrastructure around it. Absolutely. So AI has become this this driving force of the fourth industrial revolution and, and um, Leaders like President Putin has said, whoever wins the race in AI will probably rule the world. Um, so when you talk about this global AI arms race, what do you see happening there? Sure. 
Um, so for us, uh, when we looked at um, through this research, um, it's to actually grow the economy to a point where you you disrupt versus being disrupted. And so um, if you're able to offer that uh, and that the whole resilience that I mentioned before, it's it's um, the objective. Uh, you have countries such as uh, Germany that has a strategy for uh, looking at the uh, industry, uh, getting startups and so forth to help with operational efficiency in the manufacturing space. I mean, this is what they're quite well known for. And so how does AI support in that? And so if different nations have their own strategy in terms of the way they run the economy, and then they fit the AI into that, and that's where the uh, glo global arms race will support the economy to become more resilient. Very good. So which countries are, are currently leading the AI race? I, 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 what I personally see is that, that China has put in place a very ambitious AI strategy. Um, the U mm. US uh, at some point realized that maybe this could be um, the new Sput Sputnik mu moment where they have to compete uh, against them and put more resources in. So what do you see on a global scale uh, in terms of countries that are doing well and maybe some that you, you feel are falling behind or need to do a bit more? Sure. Abhishek, did you want to take that? Yeah, let me, let me take a shot at it, uh, uh, Bernard. Um, essentially, when we looked at uh, this arms race and, and we looked at uh, which regions or which countries are doing better, we looked at the four primary dimensions. Um, so we looked at, you know, where is the AI enabled startup activity the most? Where are the most jobs being created? Where are the most skills being created? And again, where is the most uh, financial value being created through AI? And when we look at these four dimensions, so while China is putting a lot of effort into AI, into building these AI capabilities, we see it over indexed on that. But in terms of private adoption, uh, we were kind of, uh, pleasantly surprised to find uh, countries, smaller countries like uh, Israel and Singapore are uh, doing uh, or taking a big lead in that. Uh, they, they kind of uh, are, are the crucible or the labs in the world, so to speak. They can take those risks and they're well ahead of, of peers in terms of the national level AI strategy or a national level uh, program in place. So Israel and Singapore were kind of the leaders for us. But, you know, uh, one of the things that we, we kind of uh, agree upon and we found out is that the more data leads to better AI. And, and in longer term, the scale of China and US is going to play out uh, You know, with, with these tons of data that, that China collects. Uh, they would have you know, better AI systems in place. But as of now, if you just look at the current snapshot, Israel and Singapore, along these four dimensions, if you look at it in totality, are doing quite well. And where, where do you place other countries like the, the US, for example, um, Europe? Are there any, yeah, so any I, leaders, laggers in Europe? Sure. Mm -hmm. I think uh, it's, it's a fairly nuanced uh, answer. So allow me a few minutes. Uh, the way we see this, uh, especially in, in the context of, uh, for example, AI knowledge and capabilities, we see US leading it uh, mm -hmm. still. In terms of you know designing the algorithms, uh, coming up with the next let's say the language of AI, uh, US still leads that space very much. And it has this uh, this virtuous cycle of, of being able to develop the next wave and also attract the talent, therefore, that would participate in and develop the next, let's say, the innovation in AI. So it, US is very much the leader in that. But in terms of, let's say, uh, private sector adoption or in terms of uh, AI-related jobs, we see Germany uh, also playing a fairly uh, good role uh, especially with their SME and manufacturing program, Germany within Europe is is taking a, a clear lead in AI. Interesting. And one of the things one of the things that um, coming out of Abhishek's discussion is, you have those that are the impact um, you know metrics that we measured in the study versus those that are the enablers, and um, the enablers would be like um, where talents are flowing in and out from. So uh, the US attracts quite a lot. Same with Canada and so forth. Uh, whilst uh, in Singapore, for example, they produce a lot, but they are not able to, to retain and, and attract those to come in. 
So these are the, the variations that you see in countries' um, uh, uh, implementation. And then you have the impacts that uh, Abhishek mentioned about you know, the number of startups activity where you know Estonia and Israel have done quite well in. And so are they leaders in that aspect? And the, the related type of jobs uh, per capita, for example, um, you know, US may seem like it's, it's quite a uh, nice place to work and so forth, but AI related type of jobs is actually more pronounced in other countries. So, so there are many different factors that you can say there's not really one ideal country that you say it's leading in. Yeah. Very good. So you, you talk about this concept of, of government artificial readiness. Um, can you go into this in a bit more detail? Sure. Maybe I can take a start and then Trump, please, please uh, help me uh, finish this. So uh, essentially, when we look, start looking at it, we first look for you know, some of the basic things. Does the government have a unit dedicated towards designing programs for AI, like national level programs for AI? Or is it more private industry? Different? So that's like a, you know, a basic check we, we did of where the governments are. And then we looked at, you know, in a more more nuanced state of, of what kind of financing, what kind of support has been provided and how is that support uh, being successful. So some of the, for example, the bits that, that we uncovered that, you know, if you fund more, uh, you're likely to have more skills or you're going to get more jobs. That instead of that, what we found is that, you know, you, you actually need to invest in this ecosystem uh, to, to really get this, uh, this uh, cycle of, of uh, more skills going rather than just funding startups. Uh, so that was that was you know one of the interesting findings. So that's how we we started uh, evaluating countries, and for us that's how these these top ten uh, uh, came out: so Singapore, Germany, U.S., Sweden, uh, U.K., etc. Yes, that's how they, they came out. That yes, these countries have thought this through and have put in national level programs to drive AI adoption and AI skills uh, within the country. Yeah. And it's beyond the financial as well, right? Uh, like Abhishek mentioned, the ecosystem needs to thrive together. And if you have the private sector plus the pi uh, public sector working together and the academia, this is where the, the government policies will need to put in place. And those that don't have that today uh, need to consider that. Um, otherwise, you'll be driven from one angle only and it won't be sustainable. So that's that's really a pivotal role for the government at the moment. So were there any countries that you were surprised about in terms of their readiness, where they might be not at a stage where you would expect them to be? Uh, be one, maybe one uh, surprising uh, element uh, for us uh, when we looked at it, for example, was Germany in terms of their startup uh, capability for AI. Uh, and, and if you compare that to a company like Israel or, or for that matter, Singapore, uh, the programs in place to enable to have AI-enabled startups thrive is much stronger and well laid out, uh, for example, in Israel compared to a Germany, which you know traditionally has been uh, entrepreneurial uh, and supporting SMEs, but they're much more indexed towards uh, manufacturing. So that was yeah. just one example, but there, there were quite a few um, such uh, uh, nuggets of information that we were able to Yeah, I, I actually agree with this. I've just written an article about AI in, in Germany, and this is one of the points I was making. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so what can countries do? Uh, what are some of the policy levers that have the greatest impact? And um, have you got any good examples or success stories of, of governments and countries that have done this really well, Trump? Yeah, um, I'd say one of many, would, uh, one of the things that I would say is the uh, investments in R&D supports. Um, if you look at historically, um, so the UK, the Americas, uh, Canada, they've started investing in this a decade or so ago, and they're reaping the benefits of it now. And it's almost uh, business as usual, whilst uh, those that are just emerging will really need to push a lot of the effort in to how R&D uh, is funded. Um, in the last administration with the US, their R&D fundings were cut, and, and I'm hoping, you know, uh, through the new administration, um, more will be put into it because the only way to uh, transform uh, the ecosystem is support it somehow through government policies. So uh, I would say R&D funding for investments would be one of the key drivers. Yeah, and I think uh, just to add to that a few, uh, few others. Um, so for example, uh, with all these uh, privacy concerns uh, coming up, a government uh, data set or government-led uh, data set and, and sharing uh, setup 
uh, is is one of the drivers that emerged uh, that we believe is is going to play a role. Uh, so countries which have kind of mastered this found the right balance between privacy and and uh, you know, utility of data. Uh, that that's going to play an increasingly important role because uh, regulators tend to tend to be knee jerk in in some places. So if you know something happens and then you came up with a the draconian regulation to prevent sharing of data. uh what is having a proactive approach towards how our uh, data is going to be used how it's going to impact or or create uh, value for the country uh, i think that's an important area that the government seems to be looking at absolutely yeah. and just one point on that so um, if you think about that analogy we had before electricity in the 1900s uh, you know we had dc or ac right um ac prevailed in the end so that it helped the 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 public use uh, be able to reach electricity and, and and have that whereas in the dc world if you actually had that uh, scenario it only be for the the rich and famous you know because it's all kind of uh, decentralized and so if we have data that is uh, able to, to share openly and and uh, if the government's able to support on that you'll see ai flourish quite widely and it's the same thing with how we got the world wide web in the end right it's all open source and it grew phenomenally quite quick so that's that's really the the key aspects of the analogy there so do you see a world where governments put regulation in place to share more for for private companies to share more data and make it publicly available so other companies can benefit from this yes i think there is a scenario at least in our view a scenario in play and some of it is being played out for example what you're seeing in china is that where government plays an increasing role in how much of citizens data resides where and how it is used and and uh, there can be a piece is is a, there's a likelihood uh, that there can be a, a neutral data host so to speak where data becomes a natural infrastructure element and it therefore similar to for example spectrum or similar to you know uh, land um, so something as 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 critical as that and therefore there is a potential scenario where this becomes part of national infrastructure is regulated or more, more tightly and and government controls it very good so what what are your future predictions or your future hopes about this this ai arms race uh, maybe we can we can finish on that sure. yeah so my my perspective is that um each one of the nations do have that strategy and whereby we do freely open up the the resources um there's a arms race at the moment but hopefully there isn't such terminology in the future it'll be just be business as usual um i'd be inclined to say that um all the things are still in teething issues which we need to consider uh, especially the danger of sharing too much data um so how do we mitigate that uh, so the challenges i foresee and talking on the data is that aspect but um i hope that in the next 10 years we'll be seeing a lot more uh, ai applications that are uh, accessible to everyone just like electricity very good anything to add abhishek yes i think uh, just building on the analogy of electricity i think uh, in the nearer term which is the next 5 to 10 years uh, the countries that are leading now in terms of the basics of ai are going to have uh, going to lead uh in in and and reaping the economic benefits of it so there's going to be at least some countries that will move ahead faster uh, than others and it's going to be quite pervasive and it, it, we anticipate this to be quite disruptive uh, uh, almost as as big as electricity and and the countries that are kind of leading in this space will start seeing those translate into in, into you know, um, financial into gdp numbers uh, quite significantly so that's this this race we we're going to see this uh, area develop and i think uh, you know it's a, it's a space to watch out for so if i put you on the spot which three countries would you put uh, at the top of your list in in 10 years time from from the kind of research you've done um i'd like to think at least singapore would be able to implement quite a lot of this thing um they've been quite uh, advanced um the smaller countries like say estonia and israel definitely will be uh, one of the things uh, countries to watch out for Um I really like to see um Canada um be also part of the top 4 or 5. Uh, they've been flourishing quite well as well. Yeah. Very yeah. good. Wonderful. Thank you so much for taking time to talk to me today about this fascinating topic and uh, I will put the the link to your article uh, at the bottom of 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 this video and the article. Thank you very much. Thanks, Thanks very much. much.